Hi all, uh, welcome to the video lectures of uh, Nano Electronics. This is the part uh, 3 of uh, module 5. In this module, uh, in this session, we will discuss about uh, the Coulomb blockade effect in quantum dots and also discuss about uh, the effect of uh, magnetic field in nanostructures. Okay. So we all know that in uh, 3D devices, in 3-dimensional MOSFETs, the magnitude of the current are get reduced as the size of the device shrinks. So here consider a quantum dot, look at the figure, consider a quantum dot is connected between two uh, reservoirs, electron supply that is a reservoir. So we know that uh, the quantum dot is nothing but a, a zero dimensional devices, zero D structures. So in quantum dot, the size of the structure is get reduced in all the axes, in all the three axes, X, Y and Z axis, the size will be uh, below 100 nanometer. Such uh, structures are called zero dimensional structures, nanostructures or quantum dot and also we know that in uh, heterojunctions there will be barrier to uh, different uh, materials uh, connected together at the interface there will be potential barrier that uh, potential barrier is called the tunnel junctions so here also tunnel junction here and here so this is a common dot so when the size of the uh, nanostructure it shrinks as you get reduced then the energy levels also become quantized so in quantum dot look at here uh, in this inside the quantum dot these uh, lines are represented as uh, the energy levels so the energy levels are represented as these solid lines so the energy levels are quantized and there will be barrier here and here there will be potential difference there is a potential barrier with respect to the reservoir so this is the fme level energy level fme energy level ef1 here also fme energy level ef2 so uh, in the heterojunction we know that there will be tunneling so the electrons uh, will move from the reservoir 1 to the quantum dot through the barrier that is a perpendicular transport such movement of electrons is called the tunneling effect okay so here in order to allow the transport of electrons to or from the reservoirs the barrier will have to be sufficiently thin uh, we know that uh, when the barrier thickness is get uh, when uh, when the barrier thickness become thin very thin the tunneling will be more Anyway, uh, the electrons uh, will be trapped inside the quantum dot. The quantum dot is collecting electrons or charge carriers. So, the quantum dot will have capacitance. So, the quantum dot will act as a capacitor here. Because the electrons are trapped inside the quantum dot. Also, uh, the capacitor, we all know that capacitor will collect. Uh, the charges the charge so there will be here also there will be the capacitance so consider there are n a number of electrons in the dot uh, so when you form the junction there will be tunneling and the tunnel electrons will be settled in these energy levels suppose, suppose we want to add one more electron to the quantum dot after the tunneling if you want to add one more electron from the reservoir to the quantum dot you need to apply external electric field you need to apply external voltage suppose uh, there is a uh, capacitance in the quantum dot that is capital C considered as capital C and the number of electrons capital N and charge inside the quantum dot uh, consider this as consider it as capital q 
So, what will be the potential energy? So, applied external uh, external potential energy should be E V E. Okay. Uh, Q into V that is potential energy. So, what will be the potential energy of capacitor here? So, cotton dot will have capacitance. So, the potential energy in the cotton dot will be Q square by 2C where Q is the uh, charge. So, we know that the potential energy of a capacitor is Q square divided by 2C. So, the uh, energy uh, Q square by 2C, Q is the charge. Uh, so, uh, electron charge, we can take it as small e. So, e square by 2C. So, in order to move one electron from reservoir 1 to the content dot, you need to apply external energy, external potential energy. So, external potential energy Ev that is equal to Q square by 2C. So, what should be the voltage applied? Potential energy is Q square by 2C. Applied potential energy should be Q square by 2C. So, here also, if the charge in content dot is capital Q and its capacitance is capital C, the potential energy we know that it is Q square by 2C. So the question is that what should be the applied voltage in order to move a single electron from reservoir 1 to the content dot. So potential energy Ev is equal to Q square by 2C. So what will be the capital V? Ev is equal to Q square by 2C. So V is equal to Q square 2C divided by Q or E square Q is E e square 2c divided by e okay so the voltage will be e by 2c so the potential energy is e square by 2c so the voltage will be e by 2c so when you apply a minimum uh, extend voltage uh, e by 2c then you can move an electron from reserve 1 to the quantum dot the reverse process is also possible Anyway, if you apply a voltage, an external voltage equal to E by 2C, there will be moment of a single electron from reserve 1 to the quantum dot. So, this is the IV characteristics in a quantum dot which show the column blocket effect. So, if the applied voltage that is uh, in x axis it is voltage, y axis current. So uh, take this cotton. If the applied voltage is less than uh, E by 2C, if the applied potential energy is less than Q square by 2C, there will not be a mo um, there will not be a moment of electron. So if the applied voltage is Q by 2C, that is if the applied voltage is E by 2C, there will be current. If the applied voltage is beyond this uh, uh, E by 2C, definitely there will be current. So, uh, this is the IV character. The reverse process is also possible. There is uh, in the reverse process, the reverse moment of electron is also called the current. The moment of electron is nothing but the current. Anyway, if the uh, magnitude is less than, magnitude of applied voltage is less than E by 2C, there will not be moment of electron. There will not be current through the barrier. Okay. So anyway, in order to observe the Coulomb blockhead effect, the applied voltage should be greater than E by 2C. Again, uh, you need to uh, note one more point. Consider the time taken for an electron to move from uh, the reservoir 1 to the content dot that is uh, uh, change in time delta t uh, we know that the change in time uh, is rc r into c so it is rt into c look here rt here rt is nothing but the resistance of the barrier equivalent resistance of the tunnel barrier r into the capacitance of the content dot so delta t change in time or the time taken for an electron to be transferred from the reservoir 
to the content dot is r into c r t into c then uh, a fluctuation is in the number of electrons in the content dot uh, it will uh, definitely induce changes in potential energy of of uh, the content dot the potential energy we know that it is called by 2c so change in energy delta is approximately equal to e square by c so the potential energy is e square by 2c uh, the fluctuation in uh, potential energy if you add more and more electrons to the content dot will approximately equal to e square by c so delta e is e square by c and change in time delta t in the time taken for an electron to be transferred is delta t that is r into c so uh, the uncertainty principle uh, express that uh, it says that uh, delta e into delta t the change in energy into change in time should be greater than h planck's constant so here delta e is e square by c and delta t is r into c r t into c so e square by c into r t into c should be greater than h according to the uncertainty principle or from this equation we can write r t r t is greater than r t should be greater than h by e square when you simplify this r t should be greater than h by e square so in order to observe the coulomb locket this uh, r t that is equivalent resistance of the barrier should be greater than greater than h by e square this is the second point so in order to observe the coulomb blocked effect uh, you need to not two points in order to observe coulomb blocked first point was the applied voltage in order to move an electron from uh, the reservoir to the content dot the applied voltage should be uh, greater than greater than or equal to e by 2c the potential energy uh, will be e square by 2c applied voltage should be greater than e by 2c the second point is that the tunnel barrier resistance according to uncertainty principle the tunnel barrier resistance should be very much greater than h by e square okay so now uh, we can uh, briefly discuss about the effect of uh, magnetic field on a crystals in nano uh, structures in the earlier uh, video sessions uh, we discussed about a parallel transport and a perpendicular transport uh, there uh, we observed at the moment of electrons uh, through the barrier anyway through the barrier based on the applied electric field even in the coulomb coulomb bucket uh, we observe the moment of electrons through the barrier based on the applied voltage or the applied electric field now we will uh, look into the uh, the effect of magnetic field on nano structures so when you apply a magnetic field there will be changes in energy states quantized energy states in quantum dots as well as um, quantum wells especially in uh, quantum dots uh, the effect of magnetic field will be maximum because the size of the uh, layers are get shrinked uh, under 100 nanometer in all the axis in quantum dot so uh, due to the magnetic field the energy states of uh, conduction electrons will collapse into discrete energy levels which are known as land levels it is very important so when you apply magnetic field the distance between available energy levels are get reduced the distance is decreasing so there will be more and more uh, discrete energy levels based on the applied magnetic field these condensed or discrete energy levels are called land levels it's a university question land levels again we will discuss uh, the land levels in the next sessions also then next effect is ahanna bohm effect 
Uh, here, what will happen is that uh, when you apply magnetic field, when you apply magnetic field, the amplitude of electron waves and the phase are going to change with respect to the magnetic flux. So, with respect to the magnetic field or the, with respect to the magnetic flux, the phase of uh, the moving electrons is going to change. The amplitude of electron waves at certain point oscillates with respect to the magnetic flux. This is the Ahana bomb effect. Then uh, another effect is uh, Shubnikov de Haas effect. One uh, Netherland uh, scientist de Haas and another scientist Shubnikov. They observe that uh, the conductivity of electrons in nanostructures and the opposite of reciprocal of conductivity that is electric electrical resistivity will change can be altered with respect to the magnetic field so based on the intensity of the magnetic field electric resistivity is going to change that effect is called shubnikov de has effect so one more point uh, this effect that is uh, a quantum uh, hall effect uh, we will discuss quantum hall effect in the next sessions so quantum hall effect then ahana bomb effect or uh, shubnikov d has effect then condensation of energy levels all this happen due to the uh, magnetic field applied magnetic field when you apply a magnetic field the condensation of a conduction electrons will happen uh, when you apply a magnetic field uh, the condensed energy levels we already discussed that when you apply uh, magnetic field uh, the energy levels are uh, condensed uh, distance between these condensed energy levels are changed so this energy levels new energy levels based on the magnetic field is given as en is equal to n plus 1 by 2 into h cut omega c plus h cut k square divided by 2 me k is nothing but the distance vector so if you apply a uh, magnetic field along a set axis distance vector k is set h cut we know that is h by 2 pi and m is uh, effective mass of electron and n uh, that is integer number uh, 0 1 2 3 so on based on the energy levels the number of energy levels then uh, omega c there is a frequency it's an important point that is a cyclotron frequency when you apply a magnetic field uh, we can observe uh, the cyclotron frequency which is given as e into b divided by m e magnetic field b or if you apply a magnetic field across uh, set axis it is denoted as b set okay so we can conclude the sessions. So in this session, uh, we discussed about the Coulomb blockade effect, very very important Coulomb blockade effect. We will again uh, uh, express, uh, or we will again explain the Coulomb blockade effect during the explanation of uh, single electron transistor. The basic working principle of uh, single electron transistor is Coulomb blockade effect. That we will discuss in sixth module. Uh, then we discussed about uh, the uh, briefly discussed about uh, the effect of magnetic field on nanostructures, Ahana bohm effect, then uh, Shipnikov de Haas effect, the condensation of energy levels that is Landau levels. So in the uh, next session, part four, we will discuss about uh, brief. Uh, we will uh, explain uh, the concept of Ahana bohm effect. Okay, thank you.